Hello there and welcome back to Field Study, an exploration of food and the landscape. Today I'm here in this beautiful patch of wet woodland next to the river that runs through my village and I'm going to introduce you to what I believe is one of the most underrated wild edible plants in the UK. Stay tuned. So this plant that we have growing along this really wet pathway here next to the river is Persicaria hydropiper or water pepper or otherwise known as smartweed, uh, our smarts is another name for it. It is a delicious wild edible plant um, that doesn't have that much of a culinary history here in Europe. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later, but I believe it's one of the most versatile ingredients that we have growing at this time of year. So this plant is in the wider Polygonaceae family, uh, which has lots of edible plants in um, that you'll recognise. So buckwheat, dock, if you've seen some of my other videos, we would have gone into that. Um, Japanese knotweed, um, Vietnamese coriander, which is delicious, is in the same family as this. However, this plant has a trick up its sleeve. Now, first things first, to identify this plant, we first need to look at the habitat that it grows in. It is a plant of wooded riverbanks, of wet places where water puddles up and the mud never seems to dry out. So look in the wettest corner of the woodland that you go walking in and you might come across this plant. You can recognise it by these long willow-like pointy leaves that are this beautiful lime green colour and they appear on opposite sides of its long stem. And if you look incredibly carefully, maybe through a hand lens, you'll see the edges of the leaves have got these tiny little hairs on them. The stem itself has these beautiful sheathed nodes and the flowers and the seeds when they come out are really, really recognisable and come out the top and sort of droop over. And these are the aerial parts of the plant that we are most interested in harvesting. And now as the name water pepper suggests, this plant is peppery and we're talking peppery hot. Uh, this plant can give most chilies a run for their money and for a spice head like me uh, that is a very useful thing to be able to incorporate in your cooking. Like most spicy things you'll read in the books that it has a flavour that is somewhat akin to wasabi and it certainly does have that sort of um, kick to it on a spice level however it doesn't have that aromatic thing that wasabi and horseradish has where it goes up your nose and fills your mouth it is um, more of a, a strange intense heat uh, that is really versatile in food um, it is really really good and I'm surprised we don't eat more of this now this spicy flavour is actually one of the ways that you can tell whether the plant that you've got in front of you is water pepper as opposed to one of the other Persicaria species. Persicaria has many species in it and lots of them look alike, uh, so growing in the same place as this plant here you'll have very common weeds like red shank that's got the beautiful sort of like pinkish flowers on. There is also a plant known as tasteless water pepper which is exactly like water pepper but doesn't have the flavour that we're after so no good to us. Um, there is lesser water pepper which doesn't grow as big and it's got more of an upright flower stalk. Uh, all of these things look somewhat similar but they don't have the same peppery flavour that hits you in the face that actual water pepper does. So if you are 100% sure that you have identified water pepper or one of its Persicaria cousins the last thing to do is to take um, some of the sprouting shoots of it or even some some of the seeds and to just chew it up in your mouth. <laughs> now as the enzymes, <laughs> that's spicy, oh it's spicy, <laughs> fantastic. So as the enzymes get to work in your mouth and break down the chemicals in this, you are hit with this rushing heat sensation it is lovely uh, if you like chili this plant is one for you it's a different heat to chili though and it doesn't last as long and that from a culinary perspective is an interesting thing to be able to play with the uh, the chemical that causes that sensation in our mouth within this plant is called 
polygodiol, I think, something like that. Um, so a completely different chemical compound to the, the thing that's in capsicums that makes our mouth go on fire. Uh, it is used culinarily in other places in the world, so you'll find this in lots of places. We, uh, as Europeans, introduced it into America, so you'll find uses for it that span across America and South America. Um, but in Asia, where it grows as well, especially Japan, it is used um, in lots and lots of different recipes. Uh, so you can crush the leaves up and put them in a soy sauce. You can put them in a vinegar as a dip. Absolutely lovely, um, just to impart some of that lovely flavor and the spice in there. Um, but it is gorgeous. You can cook the leaves down into things um, and it acts like pepper, like a seasoning. So this plant has a rich culinary history elsewhere on the planet, but um, we don't seem to have used it much here in Europe, at least not in the, the written record. Um, so if you go over to Japan, you'll find this used to garnish sushi. Uh, you can crush it up and put it in soy sauce or break it down in some vinegar to make a nice little fiery dip. Um, and it is a beautiful and versatile thing. Like I said, it is the only persicaria that is hot and spicy, and uh, there's no two ways about it. It does slap you in the face. Um, so yes, just give it a nibble and you should be able to distinguish whether it is persicaria hydropiper or water pepper. I've also read things about it being a powerful anti-inflammatory and antioxidant, uh, and also people have started using this as like a, a sleep aid, like a remedy for insomnia. Um, there is one scientific study about that in mice, but I haven't read anything that backs it up really. Uh, but it is just interesting to know how human beings are using a plant in different parts of the world. I've also heard that the stems of this plant make a, a lovely yellow dye. So if you are a, a natural dyer and you want to give that a go and uh, report back to me, let me know how you get on in the comments below. I'd be fascinated to find out. Um, but yes, this is one of my favorite plants for August. It is always a showstopper at a barbecue. Um, and it is, like I say, very, very versatile. There seems to be this common misconception out there that wild food in the UK um, is tasteless or not exciting. Um, I think people have probably had one too many nettle soups that were, you know, lovingly made by someone's grandmother or things that have been stewed the hell out of. Uh, but this plant proves that we have some truly exciting, delicious culinary things growing spontaneously on the edges of our woodlands. Um, it just takes a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of time to go and find them. Right, so there we go. I hope you enjoyed this little adventure in the great British countryside. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more foraging videos from this beautiful landscape. I'll be back next week with more things that you can harvest now at the end of summer. Um, and if you want, you can join in on our live stream at 7pm on Friday night. But until then, take care. <laughs>